For years, Americans have clamored for a domestic motorcycle capable of winning. A motorcycle that could satiate any red-blooded rider with a rebellious streak. A motorcycle we haven't seen on sales floors in decades. A motorcycle upon which one can tear up. So when Indian announced the FTR 1200, some of us were immediately on board. You see, the image of the American motorcyclist didn't always conjure up some leather-clad, clueless wannabe on top of a lardy barge. Traditionally, riders wanted to bang handlebars and raise a little bit of hell with heads to the flat track, exactly where the FTR 1200 was born, and also exactly where I rendered myself incapable of reviewing this motorcycle. So Spurge has taken over for me on this one. Now, I've never seen Spurgeon in chaps, nor have I seen him in the left lane doing 10 under, so I think you're going to be in some good hands. So the big guy's hurt, and I've never been so excited for an injured friend because I now get to come out here to the mountains of California and ride Indian's brand new FTR 1200S. And the S edition is gonna give you a few upgrades over the base model, a touchscreen dash, three different rider modes, an upgraded adjustable suspension, as well as an IMU for lean angle sensitive ABS and traction control. We also have the race replica version, which adds in an Akrapovich exhaust, as well as a retuned ECU. And as Lem mentioned, it's been a long time since we've seen such an innovative machine from a major American manufacturer. And while Indian drew a lot of inspiration from this bike from the flat track, truly a race machine would be miserable to ride on the street. Instead, what you have is a stylish motorcycle designed to be used in a variety of different riding conditions. So that's exactly how I'm gonna test this bike. Indian was kind enough to give us a brand new FTR 1200S, and we're gonna use it as a sport bike, a touring machine, as well as an off-road blaster. And the best part about all this is, we don't have to give the bike back. Instead, they're gonna let us modify this machine exactly as we see fit, and we're gonna give it away to one lucky winner. Now, in addition to that, we're gonna give away a slew of Alpine Stars gear, as well as a few select Bell helmets. So if you want your chance to win, make sure you sign up at RevZilla.com. But before we do any of that, we need to see how good this bike actually is. So if you check out Indian's website, there's a variety of different packages available for the FTR 1200. They change the bike's style, as well as a little bit of its functionality. But really what I wanted to do for this review was test out a stock bike in those same scenarios, hence the uh, sport, touring, and off-road in this review. Now I know there are a lot of you out there that want to see this thing on a flat track. That's Lem style, not mine. I prefer my off-road. A little bit more dual sport style. Indian's got two different packages for this. Tracker package and a rally package, both of which are the off-road options if you want this bike, and both of which would have you believe this thing is pretty darn good off-road. But to me, when I look at it, it still strikes me as pretty much a street bike in style, as well as functionality. Based on the looks of the FTR, I would have guessed that the touring package was probably the least appropriate. But man, I'm actually really digging this thing on the open road. It reminds me a lot of the time that I took that Toronto Street Twin down to Austin for MotoGP. Really great upright seating position, nice and comfortable. I could ride this thing all day long on this two-lane blacktop. I love the width of these Pro Taper bars because it really allows you to leverage the bike through the corners. I think if I was going to modify it and try to make it slightly more aggressive, I would go with a lower bar though just to hold me into more of a tucked position. I'm having a hard time staying standing on the pegs. My feet are slipping all over the place. I would not mind some uh, some grippier pegs. And yeah, the suspension's not doing me any favors either. You know, I figure with six inches of suspension travel, I get a little more forgiveness out of here, but it's definitely a bit harsh. The suspension on this bike feels really awesome. I'm 220 pounds and normally suspension settings are one of the first things that I need to mess with on a motorcycle. But man, Taking these roads, this thing feels super planted. So the suspension on this bike has adjustments for preload, compression, rebound damping at the front and the rear. And while I was really pleased with how it handled itself up in the twisty section, I didn't make any adjustments to it. I really like how plush and comfortable it feels down here on the highway. It's not really harsh at all. So at this stage in the game, I have ABS and traction control completely turned off. I tried riding this thing off-road in a variety of different ways, but I found that the safety mechanisms are just a bit too intrusive. I mean, there's just so much power coming out of this rear wheel. It just wants to spin. This engine is so much fun. Like ear to ear grinning fun. 
I know that 120 horsepower probably doesn't sound like much in today's modern age of hyper naked sport bikes, but it's plenty of power to have fun with on the street. And a lot of that fun's really coming from the 85 foot pounds of torque this engine is laying down. The other thing I like about it is how the electronics actually play with the engine. Um, there were a couple of these corners where I was definitely hitting some loose sand and some gravel. And I was uncomfortable at first, but once I learned to trust the electronics, I found that I could accelerate pretty hard out of the corners and uh, the bike just kind of straightens itself right back out. The electronic cruise control on this bike is great. With the touch of a thumb, I can set it where I want to be and I can toggle my speed up and down. And you'll see that right now I'm sitting right around 70, 71 miles an hour, about 4,200 RPM. And the bike feels very comfortable. It doesn't feel like it's overly buzzy. It'll cruise this speed all day long. Um, and part of the stability for this in the highway comes from the fact that there's a slightly longer wheelbase with the FTR, about 60 inches, which is longer than what a traditional sport bike would be. Um, but it just really adds to the stability of this motorcycle. So I was really afraid that the longer wheelbase of this motorcycle was gonna negatively affect the handling through the corners. And that does not seem to be the case. I have no problem hustling this thing through the corners fairly well. Um, I mean, it's not quite as nimble as a true sport bike would be, but man, I'm having a blast on this bike. The other thing that I really like about it too is the engine braking. A lot of times when I've ridden bikes with slipper assist clutches, you lose a bit of the engine braking feature. But man, between the engine braking and those massive Brembo's up front, I have no problem slowing this bike down. The only thing I wish was that the uh, clutch lever had the same adjustability as the brake lever did. So I'm having a hard time getting my foot on this rear brake. I mean, these controls are just not set up for off-road use. Now in fairness, other than removing the mirrors, I didn't do too much to set this bike up, but I have a feeling you probably have to start tweaking a lot of things to get this bike comfortable off-road. The internet hates it when we don't use hands on a motorcycle. I feel like I'm in Titanic. Save me, Jack. Jack drowns. If you haven't seen it, I just ruined the ending for you. The FTR tips the scales that are hair over 500 pounds. The wall hides that weight pretty darn well on the street. It becomes very apparent off-road. I think one of the reasons that the FTR feels so balanced is the fact that what looks like a gas tank is actually an air box. The gas tank sits below my seat and uh, it just helps to lower the center of gravity of this motorcycle. Now the downside of the gas tank is that you know soon you're gonna fill it up and you're gonna have to start looking for gas again within about 100 miles. And I know that that kind of a truncated range is gonna be a deterrent for some people uh, that are using this bike as a touring machine. But for me, I don't mind stopping for gas every 100 miles or so. You know, it gives me an excuse to interact with the locals and get to see some of the small towns across America. And for me, that's what two lane touring is really all about. But as you can see, my range is down to about 37 miles and uh, I still wanna find a spot to pull over and wrap up some final thoughts in the FTR. So let's do that first and then I'll go look for some gas. So what have we learned thus far? Well, we've learned that the FTR 1200S is not a sport bike, it's not a long haul touring bike, and it's certainly not a dirt bike. Rather, it's a few of all of those things rolled into one uniquely styled motorcycle. Now keep in mind, I wouldn't want to take a sport bike off road, a long haul touring bike would not be my number one pick for canyon carving, and a dirt bike would rattle me senseless at highway speeds. And while there is something to be said for choosing the right tool for the job, there's also something pretty cool about carrying around a Swiss Army knife. So where I felt that the FTR 1200 did the best job was in sport riding. There's a lot of functionality baked in here. You can use it for your commuter, you can use it to escape the city, and then once you get out in the country, you can open it up, you can have some fun with this bike. Where I liked it the least is off-road. I really feel the FTR 1200 has a pretty heavy street bias, and yes, it was fun to rip around some hard packed dirt, but anything more aggressive than that, I'd probably be looking at a dual sport or a larger adventure bike. Now where the FTR surprised me was in its touring capabilities. Now I wouldn't want to spend 500 miles tearing down the four lane freeway, but for a lightweight two lane touring bike, I think this thing really does a great job. I mean, it's got electronic cruise control, it'll hold highway speed all day long, and it's got nice, comfortable, upright ergonomics. All you'd really need to add is a windscreen and some luggage to the back of it. Now I've heard a lot of folks compare this to bikes within Harley's lineup, and I don't think that's really a fair comparison. There's really nothing that I can see within Harley Davidson's current lineup that would compare to the FTR 1200. Where I would draw a comparison, however, is to something in Triumph's lineup, possibly a T120 or even a Scrambler 1200. 
Now the base FTR 1200 starts out at $13,500. Our race replica version, however, is $17,000, and that's a pretty decent chunk of change. And because of that, I looked at this through a pretty fine lens. And what I found was that the engine, the suspension, the brakes, the chassis on this bike are absolutely fantastic. Indian really does deliver on their promise of giving you a performance-driven motorcycle, and this fills a giant hole in their cruiser-heavy lineup. There's a few areas where I feel like Indian just kind of missed the mark, and one of those would be the clutch lever. It's not adjustable. The mirrors feel very cheap. The engine does give off a bit of heat when you're sitting in traffic, and the filler cap is a pain in the ass to use. It's a pain in the ass to keep track of. Why they couldn't have just used a flush-mounted filler cap is beyond me. Those are all things that are easy to fix with a few modifications. And in order to modify this bike, we need to now get it back to Philadelphia so that Lemmy can get his hands on it. Now, if you wanna make sure you catch that video, subscribe to us on YouTube so you can keep up with all the content we're rolling out. And if you wanna read more about my week-long adventure with the FTR 1200S, head over to Common Tread for my full ride review. And remember, we're giving this bike away. So if you want your chance to win a brand new FTR 1200S, as well as a bunch of really cool gear from Alpine Stars and Bell, Head over and sign up for Revzilla's Open It Up campaign where you can win a ton of really cool stuff. I want to thank you for joining us for this first ride review of the Indian FTR 1200S. I'm Spurge. Enjoy the ride.